As far as the brand goes, I've got everything covered. Cheers! Hi, welcome to first video of 2021, one of many probably, and today we're gonna talk about something super exciting, especially if you are PC enthusiast. Now, I've built my first computer a couple of years ago and it was an immense pleasure ordering parts and building it together. Now, you can have a similar experience now with Raspberry Pi and Desk Pi. If you are a Raspberry Pi user that's looking for a desktop experience, or maybe a media center, whether you're going with Kodi or Plex, or maybe you are into RetroPie and you want to have a nice gaming console, Desk Pi is probably going to be for you. It's awesome and honestly it brought back all that PC building experiences when I was assembling it because it actually it's quite interesting on the inside. Just take a look at this, it's absolutely fantastic, great looking case and we're going to talk in details about what you could expect from DeskPy. If you watch my videos you know this is not the first case that actually offers SSD implementation. Now Argon 1 did that before and it offered M.2 drive support. You can watch the video about Argon 1 in here. But DeskPy is different because apart from M.2 support it offers support for the regular hard drives. 2.5 inch drive so just the one you would find inside your laptop. So what's so special about this knock alike enclosure? Well, it's a very well designed box. It's made from a single piece aluminium covered with two acrylic panels. Now you have all the I.O. you probably ever wanted to get. So you have two USBs in the front, you've got SD card support, a power button that you can configure using jumpers. At the back you also have Raspberry ports available, so you have your Ethernet port, you have two USB 3.0 ports, although one is being used for the storage, and there are two USB 2.0 ports available. On top of that, you have two full-size HDMI ports to connect your displays. There is a 40-pin GPIO header, so all GPIO pins are being exposed and available for you to use, very nice. And also, obviously, there is a 3.5 millimeter jack and a USB Type-C power supply. You will quickly notice that DeskPy is much bigger than Raspberry Pi 4, and, well, I was really curious to take a look inside and figure out how come everything is really well exposed and available. So let's take a look inside and uh, talk more about other features. Once you remove front and back panels, you have to unscrew a couple of screws from the bottom of the case to actually slide out the bunch of different PCBs attached to your Raspberry Pi 4. Now those PCBs, they have completely different functions and you'll see that you actually have a bit of a choice. In terms of storage, you can either mount, as I mentioned, 2.5 inch drives, including mechanical drives or SSD, but if you prefer to use M.2 drive, go ahead because adapter board is also available. Just bear in mind that you have to use SATA drives, so if you're going to shop for M.2 uh, hard drives, make sure they're SATA compatible. But if you have a spare drive from your laptop or something, you can still use uh, these drives without the adapter board. The top PCB provides the power and USB 3.0 interface to the SATA drive. The bottom one contains two extra USB ports that uh, are available from the front and uses various different connectors to actually connect to different extension boards on the Raspberry Pi 4. I know this might look slightly intimidating at first, but it's fun to build and including instructions are really good and contain IKEA style pictures so you won't have any problems putting it together. Now I'd strongly advise you to start with Raspberry Pi 4. There's a couple of attachment boards that will extend SD card. This is why the SD card is available at front even though the Desk Pi is much bigger than Raspberry Pi 4. There is also a separate extension for GPIO header, so you have to connect those two using the tape provided, and there is a special mini version of Ice Cooling Tower fan. This fan isn't as big as the original Ice Cooling Tower, however, we'll talk about the cooling performance in a second. Taking a closer look at the PCB, you will notice that there is an infrared support, so you can use infrared remote to interact. It's a brilliant solution if you're using a Kodi or Plex. 
to drive this, there is a special jumper that actually defines how infrared behaves. Power button controls are also done via jumper, so if you want to modify how the power button behaves and what happens to your Raspberry Pi when there is a power loss, uh, then you just refer to the manual and use appropriate setting of the jumper to create specific um, power loss behavior for your Raspberry Pi 4. To access data from the hard drive, Desk Pi uses very familiar design, which I featured previously on the Geekworm uh, X857 board and obviously Argon M.2. This is that USB bridge that you have to use to link the PCB responsible for handling your drive and the Raspberry Pi itself. Now that you are familiar with what's on the inside, let's talk about benchmarks and we're gonna talk about thermal first. I think it comes as no surprise that the thermal is actually gonna be quite decent. First of all, this is one chuck piece of aluminium uh, enclosing everything, so it has brilliant thermal properties and associated active cooling, it's there to support it. Now you can use PWM signal to actually uh, direct the fan speed, so you can pick anything from silent operation to 100% uh, fan operation. Now at 100% it becomes, well, it's not noisy, but it's definitely present and you can hear the fan in a silent room, but it's not on a level that I would consider distracting. In terms of thermal performance, uh, all my tests were done at 19 degrees. So at idle, the box would uh, heat up to about uh, 37 degrees. And then when I was running a benchmark without running the fan, uh, the board or the CPU would raise its temperature to about 56 to 57 Celsius. But if you crank things a little and set the fan at 100%, the temperature would drop to about 48 degrees and kind of settled in there, which indicates that the case and the Raspberry Pi for it's cooled really well and I can handle really extensive load for prolonged periods of time. While this metal enclosure is definitely good for cooling, it might be problematic when it comes to Wi-Fi, so that was the second thing I wanted to investigate. Fortunately, I had no problem whatsoever using Wi-Fi in the same room as my router. Using iPerf, I was getting similar results between the naked board and the board enclosed inside of a desk Pi. They were in excess of 80 megabits per second when using 5G and slightly slower when using 2.4G. Now moving to another room when the router wasn't present, I've noticed a small dip in terms of Wi-Fi quality. The Raspberry Pi 4, which wasn't inside the desk Pi, was able to get approximately about 10 megabits per second more speeds than the one enclosed. While this is not ideal, it's definitely not game-breaking and Let's face it, uh, something tells me that most of you are gonna use the Ethernet and the cable instead. And the last thing I wanted to check is obviously the capability of this device as a network drive, because if you're going to have that much storage available, you might as well spin up a Samba and start sharing the content. You'd be pleased to know that I was able to saturate Ethernet gigabit connector and the write and the read speeds were oscillating above 90 megabytes per second, which is what I would expect from the board running SSD anyway. Obviously, the speed's gonna strongly depend on the drives you're using and operations you're going to perform, but don't feel inclined to jump on M.2 unless there is a specific reason, because in both uh, case scenarios, you'll be able to saturate that gigabit connection without any problems, unless you're probably using a typical mechanical drive, which might be slightly uh, slower in terms of access speeds. I think it's time for closing thoughts. Now, first problem with this, this is really popular and Seed Studio constantly is running out of stock. I bought it myself, I got a nice discount from them, so thank you very much to Seed Studio for arranging that discount. But I was waiting quite a bit to actually get my hands on it. But I would strongly recommend it because the price of $55 for what you get is absolutely great deal if you're looking for a media type uh, or desktop type enclosure for your Raspberry Pi football setup. So if you are interested in the description of this video, obviously going to find a link to this desk by case and you can decide whether you want it or not. Right, the last thing I want to say, it's 2021. There's no reason not to follow me on social media if that's your wish and you want to receive notifications. You know how YouTube works, I'm not going to explain that, but sometimes I do write articles without videos. So if you don't want to miss out, pick a social media of your choice, Twitter. 
and uh, follow me there. Thanks so much for watching guys and definitely I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.